Upland farms are something to be proud of. They have been farmed for thousands of years. They are part of our culture and our heritage, but they also need to be part of our future. They can deliver for biodiversity, for climate action, and for our sense of who we are. Hill farming is different from intensive farming. Making it work means playing to its strengths. Intensive farmers manage lands for production, and the result is that their fields have very little diversity. Hill farming has a different way of working, but there are some techniques we can borrow from intensive farms. The most important of these is rotational grazing, but adapted to achieve an agricultural and environmental objective. There are two basic grazing systems, continuous and rotational. In a continuous system, the land is grazed for most, if not all, of the growing season. In a rotational system, the stock are moved regularly and each field gets a rest between grazings. Cattle can be picky eaters. Sheep and ponies are even more selective. Given a choice, they eat what they like and leave what they don't. In a continuous grazing system, the tasty plants get eaten and when they regrow, they get eaten again and this goes on until they disappear. Many herbs cannot tolerate the constant pressure and they get grazed out. The plants that livestock do not like, the rushes, the docks, the nettles and ragweed don't get touched. They have a real advantage and they can gradually take over. When the rushes get strong enough, they will shade out the grasses and herbs, further weakening them. Eventually the cattle will not even bother trying to graze some areas and will focus on other parts of the field or farm. The result is that you can have overgrazing and undergrazing in different parts of the same field. Even at low stocking rates, a continuous grazing system will have less variety, less productivity and more problem weeds. In a rotational system, the cattle are moved on quickly, the field gets a rest and all of the plants get a chance to recover. This ensures a greater variety of plants, more clover and other legumes, more variety in height and happier, more productive livestock. Aim for at least a 40 to 50 day rotation on SPA grasslands. Achieving this will need careful planning and at least 10 paddocks or fields. A rotational system has a lot of other advantages. Taller vegetation with more herbs means deeper roots compared to a uniformly short grass pasture. Deeper roots can reach water during a dry spell. Deeper roots from plants like plantains and yarrow can pull up minerals and nutrients, peas and k's from deep down in the soil. When a cow eats their leaves, the animal gets the minerals it needs, but the animal's dung puts these minerals back on the soil surface. The herbs in the grazing animal are bringing nutrients back to where the grass can get at them. In a field of rye grass with its shallow roots, most of the minerals are out of reach and the farmer is dependent on fertilizer to feed the grass. Rotational grazing gives clover and legumes like bird's foot trefoil a chance to thrive. They take nitrogen from the air and put it into the soil, feeding the other plants and boosting productivity potentially eliminating the need for chemical nitrogen. Bird's foot trefoil tolerates more acidic soils and poorer drainage than clover, but it will not do well under a continuous grazing system. Rotational grazing needs less fertilizer and offers greater productivity, but it does need careful management. You need to be able to control where cattle graze and you need to be able to provide for their needs. To control grazing you need fencing. Existing field boundaries are important, but temporary electric fencing is flexible and allows you to fine-tune grazing in response to the changing seasons, the needs of your livestock and the speed of plant growth. Animals need drinking water and you have to provide for this in every field or paddock. The Hen Harrier Project will invest with you in the provision of this infrastructure through your annual works plan. The longer stock are in a field, the longer it will need to rest afterwards. You need grass to grow grass. If it gets grazed down to the butt, then it will take much longer to recover. Think of each leaf as a solar panel. 
If enough grass leaves are left behind, you still have the power to produce more. If all of the leaves are gone, you have nothing to power a recovery. Cattle should only be allowed to take the top few inches of growth before they are moved on. Don't worry about stop trampling vegetation. If animals are trampling vegetation, they are pushing plant fibres into the soil, they are recycling nutrients and helping to put a skin back on the land, reducing its vulnerability to poaching. Don't worry about leaving a lot of grass behind you when you move the stock on. The more you leave, the sooner it will be ready for the next grazing. If you try to get more of the grass grazed, recovery will take longer and you will start to lose a lot of the tastier, more nutritious herbs. Keep the animals moving. Animals should not be in a field or paddock for more than four days, no matter how big it is. Ideally, they should not be back for at least 40 to 50 days, even longer if the animals are out in winter or during a drought. If the field is very large, split it up with a temporary electric fence. It is best to have water in each paddock, but you can leave a lane open to a water trough if you need to. Temporary fencing gives you that flexibility. You can draw power from a permanent electric fence on the boundary. If you do not have a main supply, you can use a solar powered fence. It is just as strong and will not run down like a battery. Include your hill land and your improved grassland in your rotation. Close silage ground early and get a cut in May. The grass is at its most nutritious and high quality silage will reduce your need for concentrates in the winter. Quantity might be less, but you will more than make up for it in quality. Reduce your silage needs by shortening your feeding season. Cutting two weeks off at each end takes a month off your feeding season and will benefit your bottom line. Rotational grazing and building up covers in autumn can help you achieve this. If you have mountain grazing, put cattle up there in June and get them off by the end of July. The vegetation on the hill is at its most nutritious in early summer and having the cattle up there gives your fields the rest that they need. Make use of your improved grassland in July through to September. This will allow you to build covers on some of the more extensively grazed lands. If you really need to, you can graze these fields in late summer and autumn, but shorten the rotation and move the animals through very quickly. Building covers in this way will shorten your feeding season while allowing plants to set seed and store reserves in their roots. Never sacrifice a paddock. The animals will be unhappy, the sward will be destroyed and there will be long-term damage to soil structure. Recovery will be very slow and weeds like ragwort and docks are almost guaranteed. The sacrifice paddock will not earn anything in the hen harrier program and you could be penalised in other schemes as well. Get the best out of all of your land. On improved grassland, particularly on your silage ground, spread lime if you need it. You will get more value out of less fertilizer if you get the pH right. Never spread lime on peaty soils. It will take the skin off and make them even more vulnerable to poaching. Be very careful about liming semi-natural grasslands as it may reduce plant diversity and your habitat payments will suffer. Seek specialist advice from the project team before applying lime to semi-natural grasslands. Keep fertilizer use on designated lands to an absolute minimum. Fertilizer will cost you money, it will reduce plant diversity and will hit your habitat payments hard. Chemical nitrogen will hammer clovers and other legumes and further increase your costs. There is real potential to boost farm income and deliver for conservation. On the hill farm, good grassland management, rotational grazing, the correct use of hill and aftermath grazing, along with building autumn stockpiles can make all the difference. It's in your hands. <laughs>